Hello and welcome to Life Happens. I'm in a tree. Fantastic thing about science is it changes the way that you look at the world. I used to think about trees sort of from the bottom up, like there's this big cylindrical thing coming out of the ground, and then it has like green things coming out at the top. And then I took biology in high school, and I started seeing trees as living things with a metabolism, and they kind of flipped. So now there's this big green living ball with a long appendage sticking into the ground to gather nutrients. And then I took biology at university, and I realized that it's kind of both, that every tree leads two lives. One life above ground, where competition is mainly for space and sunlight, and one life below ground, where you compete for phosphorus and nitrogen and water, and these two completely different systems, both immensely complex and dynamic and sensitive in their own right, are connected by this massive vertical transportation highway called the trunk. So basically you end up with something a bit like this. Hey tree, hey. Hey, what's it like being a tree? It's not responding. Uh, partly because it can't talk and doesn't have a brain, but also because it can't hear me. As far as we know, plants have no way of sensing sound, but they can sense a lot of other things. If you're an animal like this sheep, your response to sensory information is to move. Plants don't really offer much in way of locomotion, like this oak tree here. You're not going anywhere. If you're a plant, your response to sensory information is to grow. Plants can sense gravity, so they know to grow upwards. They can sense light. In fact, the tip of each growing shoot is built like a simple eye. They can tell where the sunlight is coming from and grow towards it. And they can kind of taste the soil. The root tips are like sensitive little sniffing fingers that not only detect nutrients and grow towards them, but can sense other roots from the chemicals they put out. And it can actually tell whether the roots belong to the same tree or to another tree of the same species or a different species altogether. By the way, if you're a tree and you encounter roots of another species, the best response is often to grow lots in that space to try and compete for the nutrients there. But if you encounter a relative, it's often best to invest your resources elsewhere. It's usually much tougher to compete with your own species because you need the exact same stuff and you use the exact same method to get that stuff. Here are some other reasons why I love trees. I love trees because they're huge. They're the biggest living things on the planet, depending on how you measure, and whether you only count living tissue, and depending on what counts as a single organism, but that's a different story. They're certainly among the oldest things. Some of them are thousands of years old. This bad boy here? Probably a couple hundred years. I love trees because they drink lots of water. They grow really tall, like some of them upwards of 100 meters, but even though they don't have muscles to pump liquid with, they still have to get thousands of liters of water up their trunks. In fact, they can't even suck it up like a vacuum cleaner, because when you're fighting gravity, regular low pressure can't get water to such heights. To solve this problem, trees need to do some really freaky stuff to the laws of physics. Every second, as the tree breathes, Water molecules drift gently out of the leaves, evaporated by the sun. But water is cohesive. The water molecules are all loosely connected to one another. So as molecules go missing at the top and new ones move in to fill the gap, they tug gently on the ones below them. This crazy serial tug of war called transpiration pull causes water to drift slowly upwards against gravity. This is one of few examples in nature of so-called negative pressure, which is powerful, but brittle. Water doesn't like being dragged along. The weak bonds between the water molecules are constantly in danger of being pulled apart, causing the water to become gas. To prevent the whole water column from vaporizing, plants have little grills set into the water channels to contain any gas bubbles that form. Even when localized, this vaporization is pretty intense. If you're walking in a forest in the spring when the water flow is at its strongest and you hear a snapping sound, that's the sound of trees tearing water apart. I love trees because they're weird. More than half of a tree consists of water, but it's not the same water from day to day. It's constantly entering the roots and leaving the leaves. A tree is like a slow, vertical river. Out of the part of the tree that isn't water, about half is nitrogen and phosphorus and other minerals that the roots have collected from the soil. The remaining half is carbon, which the leaves have collected from the air. Sitting in a tree, you can easily fool yourself that it's simply a feature of the landscape, but it's a living, breathing thing that built itself out of rain and dirt and air. A tree is an in-between, as much a part of the atmosphere as a part of the ground. I love trees.